convention great. I sure hope you're having as much fun as we are. We're sure having a good time. I'm so delighted to have the opportunity to present a taste of Canada to you at Thermovention and welcome to my kitchen. I, I would like the opportunity to introduce you to my multi-generational Thermomix family. My 91-year-old mother, doesn't she look great for 90? <laughs> my daughter, Reagan, who's also in Thermomix with me. My mom uses her TM5 every day. Of course, Reagan and I have our TM6. I started with the TM31 and my grandchildren, oh my goodness, we, oh, we, they sad. love their Thermomix too. We have a passion. Um, one of the reasons is 2021. Oh my goodness, it's been such a year, hasn't it? Yes. Such a year. Here, let's perk it up. <laughs> okay, so we're perking it up a little bit because health and time are the two most precious commodities for us. Preserving our family food culture and family traditions is so important, and it's very difficult when you're not well or you're worried about getting well, you don't have too much time. But we can do everything with Thermomix. Yes, absolutely. Right. Do you remember my Thermomix mantra? Delicious, nutritious, <laughs> economical, <laughs> and simple. Yes. Food's got to be delicious, nutritious, economical, and simple. So when we were choosing a recipe for you today, we decided it had to be yogurt. It was one of the first successes I had with my Thermomix. It's a family tradition forever. My mother has passed so many recipes to me. I've passed so many to my daughter. So today... My daughter's going to show us how we make yogurt from my hand to hers. Okay? <laughs> See you in a minute. We'll be a little quieter then. <laughs> so take it away, Reagan. What do we need to know about yogurt? We just need to know ingredients. The best possible ingredients you can get. Two liters of whole milk and yogurt. Plain yogurt. So we're using 60 grams of yogurt per one liter of milk. Excellent. And just a little note on that. Wonderful information. It's a little more difficult sometimes to find plain yogurt that has nothing in it. You're looking for plain yogurt that has only milk, milk solids, and yogurt culture. That's it. So take it away. Let's get, let's get started here. Amazing. High fat milk. So we are going to just add the two liters. You don't need to weigh it because we know it's two liters. Okay, I'll take that. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, so we've got the two liters of milk. We're not using this right now, right? No, we don't use that yet. So right now we're gonna heat this milk to 80 degrees and, and for 20 minutes. 80 degrees, 20 minutes at speed two. And we, why do we do that? To kill the bad cultures, or to, to kill the bad bacteria, sorry. Yeah, oh yeah. Actually, it could be culture, but we want to, <laughs> we want to kill the bad bacteria. So we make a great foundation for the yogurt culture. So we're going to do it and we'll see you back here in 20 minutes, 20 minutes 80, 80 degrees, speed two. See you back in 20. <laughs> What's that I hear? It's singing my favorite song. Oh, Valerie. Come Sweet open. Valerie, come open me. You, I, <laughs> Almost at it. <laughs> Almost at it. Okay, so let's stop it. We're at 80 degrees, 20 minutes. We've killed all the bad bacteria. Bacteria. <laughs> and what's going to happen now? So now we're going to have to cool it to 37 degrees. And how we do that is we put it in the fridge. And then about 30 minutes, we'll bring it back out. You'll set it back on the base and it'll tell us what the, what the current temperature is. So then you just check on it about every 15 minutes takes about an hour actually it depends on your climate your house everything the first it, in the summer it takes me about an hour an hour and 15 minutes I, I'm finding in in the fall or winter it can take me up to two hours yeah so today I might even actually set the timer for one hour in the fridge because I've been making a lot of yogurt lately and I'm finding you know we'll probably be good but on the safe side start with 30 minutes set your timer stir it back on the base everything Reagan said Perfect. you're such a good learner you're such a good teacher. <laughs> Here you go. And we're going to be back when this has cooled to 37 degrees to put the culture in the milk. And we'll show you how to do that shortly. So what have you been doing for the last hour and 15 minutes? So we've been cooling the yogurt in the fridge. 
We've been taking it out in about 30 minutes and checking the temperature. And if it's not quite at the right temperature, we've been putting it back and forth and just double checking about every 15 minutes. It took about an hour and 15 minutes, I think. Well, we think it's ready. So Reagan's gonna bring it out. The temperature is here and it will read. It says, we're gonna bring it out. We'll see what temperature it is. I'm just gonna put that back to zero. Okay. So it says 37 degrees and we're ready. What are you gonna do now? So now we're gonna weigh in our 120 grams of our yogurt into the milk. So that's pretty easy. Two simple ingredients, a little bit of wait time for some fabulous yogurt products. Oh, great. Well, look at that. Okay, perfect. Right on the line. Yeah, 120 grams. There we go. So now we're going to get it ready to ferment. Uh, you're going at how many minutes, right? So this is 20 minutes, 37 degrees, to, because now we want to keep it at that warm temperature. I mean, at room temperature. 37. And then speed two. Okay, so in 20 minutes, the yogurt will be ready to ferment and we'll put it in an insulated bowl in the counter. And if you don't have an insulated bowl, there are so many different ways of keeping that yogurt warm. We find five hours is really good for ours. I mean, we're not scientists, we just like to cook, right? Another way that you can incubate it is maybe in a heating blanket mm -hmm. uh, on low, you'll figure it out, but this is how we do it. And we're gonna share that with you shortly. We'll be right back, bye. All right, well, I guess it's done. We have in the bowl for 20 minutes, we've had the milk with the yogurt, and now we're going to pour it into our thermal serving bowl. If you don't have a thermal serving bowl, you can use um, other, like other bowls, make sure you cover it, keep it warm. Even a heated blanket will work. So we are gonna pour this gently, so we keep to keep all of it into the bowl. And we're gonna leave it on the counter for five hours, and then we're going to put it in the fridge overnight. To the top. So we're gonna put our lid on. And now we're gonna leave it for five hours. <laughs> <laughs> so the yogurt has been where? In the fridge, overnight. After five hours on the counter, let's check it out. Let's check it out. Okay. Oh, it's heavy. Heavy and gorgeous. All right. Wow. Oh, there will often be a little bit of liquid on top, but let's see. How let's does it look? It. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Oh my gosh. Wow. Look at that. Can you see that? Look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? All right. It is so beautiful. So what are we going to do with it? So we are actually going to pour the, the yogurt onto our Varoma trays that we have covered with cheesecloth. Who has two Varoma trays, Reagan? Two people that are <laughs> in the business. <laughs> or, or that own Thermomixes. Yeah. If you don't have two, what would you suggest? Then probably in a colander. Well, how about one at a time? Just half and half? Well, yeah, you could do one half. That's half. usually what I did for many years. Just one at a time. So let's pour half into here. And this is 2.2, .2, so it usually will fit. On just uh, uh, two, two points and two trays. Yeah. So look at this thick. Wow. Now this hasn't been stirred. You're going to see a little bit later what it looks like when it's stirred a little bit because this is lovely, lush, and thick right now. And let's do the other one. Just hold it there. And we'll just let it plop out up a little higher. So they, oh, look at that. Wow. That is just incredible. Okay. So you can see it, what we call plop and flop. Oh, that's a beautiful sound. All right. So we have two. <laughs> We're going to make, we can do Greek yogurt out of this, Ledna. Yeah. Or yogurt cheese. Or yogurt cheese. 
So we're just going to, if I want the yogurt cheese, I usually just let them hang overnight and the next day they're, they're ready to release naturally. But if we want something different, a different product, we have to work at it a little differently and we're gonna teach you how shortly. We're missing someone. We're missing Reagan. We're doing yogurt, but she's helping me with a, with, with a couple of things right now and she'll be here in a minute. So we are at the phase where I just wanna show you. This is that beautiful yogurt that we just made. This is how it looks when it comes right out in the morning. It's beautiful. The shelf for the Varoma and several layers of cheesecloth, four to six will be fine. And I've got them laid out here. I'm gonna put it on the sink over a bowl that's going to catch the whey. And I'm going to right now, look at this, gorgeous. Can you see the texture of that? Can you see, oh, isn't that lovely? Now, I've already done, used half of it. So one liter and a half will fit in this aroma tray really nicely almost two liters to be honest, but 2.2 is stretching it a little bit. So I'm just gonna do half at a time. And what we do is four to six hours will be this beautiful, incredible Greek yogurt. Nice, thick, luscious yogurt that you love. Just hang it for four to six hours. And in four to eight hours will be Labna. Reagan, is Lebna your favorite? Yes, Lebna is my favorite cheese. It's a the nice yogurt, part of the yogurt, sorry. It's well, it's, a, it's on the way to cheese. Yeah. It holds its shape. It's a really thick, lovely um, Middle Eastern mm -hmm. yogurt product that we just love. And then eight to 12 hours, you're going to get yogurt cheese. So let's put this away so that we can get it hanging to make some beautiful Greek yogurt and then, would you pass over here? What do we have here? Look at this. We have already, can you see this texture? Sometimes I use a really clean dishcloth instead of cheesecloth. I like the texture it leaves. Look, it's so easy to separate. It's been hanging about eight hours. It's a little moist in the middle. So I just place another one over top of it, flip it upside down with the tray, lift it up, peel it away. Look at that beautiful texture so easy to do. Then I lift it up, place it back into the Varoma tray, and I leave it sit for another couple of hours. It'll be ready to roll into a ball, and I will have yogurt cheese. And those are all in the instructions of your recipe. The first couple of times, you might need to use a D-shaped dough spatula, just like this, to help clean it off the cheesecloth, if it's sticking a little bit, to put it on top of the other one, and that will really be be so easy for you. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do this together. I've got some started in a half a cup of gorgeous fruity olive oil, my favorite. And then I've got this, yeah, you can put that aside. And I've got this very small ice cream scoop. And look at the beautiful ball. It just kind of makes, it helps me to make the perfect. And I just put it in my hand and I roll it Look at that beautiful yogurt cheese ball. All right, I wanna give you another close-up view about how to do yogurt cheese balls. I use this small, small ice cream scoop with a beautiful clump of yogurt cheese that I had prepared and just prepared into a ball. And you can see the nice texture on it that the cheesecloth has made. I just take the ice cream scoop, get almost the same amount every time. Not exactly, it doesn't need to be exact, but close and I portion it, roll it into a ball, and set aside. If I can do it, so can you. Now, if you use two liters of milk and you make yogurt and you hang it to make yogurt cheese, you're going to end up with about 33 yogurt cheese balls. If wow, you, that's a lot. Yeah, it's pretty nice. If you do half, you'll end up with about half. So you can keep half for yogurt or half for labna or half for Greek yogurt and the other half for the cheese. That's what I would do. Yeah, however you like to do it. So we'll be back in a few minutes. We're rolling cheese balls. Okay, didn't take us long. We're all finished. I didn't put them all in here because um, they would stick together 
and it's easier to put them here for now and I'll move them back and forth in a minute. So let me explain how I do this. I have this incredible, you can just do this and put them in a jar like this, completely covered with oil and sealed tight and they will keep for months, six months, eight months and in in, totally fine in the fridge. As long as they're all covered with oil, you have beautiful yogurt cheese anytime you want with that beautiful olive oil. But I like them like this. This is my own spice blend, which I'm crazy over. And actually I'm not the only one. So uh, we've shared the recipe with you. It's been on my website for a very long time. I don't know how many have made this, but anybody locally that's ever tried these is really crazy over them. This is your time to take a screenshot of this because this is an incredibly delicious spice blend. You're gonna love it. So let me just go in. I've got about 14 balls in here to start, and I've got a tablespoon of mold and salt. It's a thicker um, finishing salt, and I really like the mold and salt, so we'll add one tablespoon of mold and salt. And I've got three garlic cloves, totally minced. And so I'm gonna add the three Oh, I love garlic. And you know what? This, some of these flavors I don't really like on their own. I have a tablespoon of dried basil leaves. Ooh, yummy. I have a tablespoon of dried oregano leaves. And then I have a teaspoon and a half of caraway seed. Uh, it's an odd, thing, but I just thought about it. And you know, every now and then you get the taste and it's just sublime. There's just a little bit. And once they have soaked a little bit in all of this liquid, they're amazing. Fennel seed, a teaspoon and a half. And my least favorite, but it's enough. I mean, it's enough, is three quarters of a teaspoon of cumin seed. Ooh, it's just enough to add that little je ne, je ne sais quoi. And it's, it's that Eastern, Middle Eastern hint. Same amount of some hot red chili flakes. Can you get me a spatula, Reagan? Sure. Because we're just going to right now have a little bit of time rocking and rolling these balls. So here they are. And I want to, to take them back and forth. This is how I mix them. And I'll put some now of these ones. I started out with a half a cup a fruity olive oil. That's plenty if you're doing half, but I think I might use a little bit more. And I'm just gonna get some from behind me there. Thank you so much. Lovely. And just enough to cover these, you know, so that they're not sticking to each other. Just a little bit extra, a couple, a tablespoon or so. And I'm gonna put them in here. And then this makes for just a lovely, we just go back and forth. Oh my goodness, it sounds wow. a little silly, but you have no idea how good these are. Oh, honestly, really, they're just absolutely to die for. I have friends that beg me to make these for them. And, um, and of course I do, that's what friends do. I'm just gonna wipe my hands on the cheesecloth here. So I've done it in three batches. And again, about a tablespoon or so of olive oil, just to cover. And let's put these in there. And we don't want to miss any of that delicious goodness. Oh, thank you, that's <laughs> just what I needed, a mind reader. So this is the best way for me anyway. And I'm going to start just with some oil and my lovely, gently, oh my goodness. Come wow. my little babies, let's go in your, your bath. And now these will keep, <laughs> These will keep in the fridge again because they're covered with oil. As long as you top them up and make sure they're actually covered with oil. So they're gonna keep, keeping a few behind because I wanna make sure they all fit in nicely. I'm just gonna put some of them in this second bowl here. And you and I can have these for a treat later. Yes. You know, when I taught school, my students always thought that the spatula was called Mrs. Rogers' money-saving yeah. tool. So you see, that is absolutely gorgeous. And now what we're going to do is we're going to top it up with oil. Isn't that so pretty? I could probably fit another one or two in there, but I don't want to switch them. 
Mm -hmm. They're still quite soft and tender, and we want them to be very lush and creamy. We don't want them to be hard and cardboardy. So this one might need a little bit of moving around just so that it's totally covered. We don't want any to be sticking out. We want the oil there. It's really amazing how when you're moving them around, mm -hmm. they literally are so solid and they, they just, I mean, you're being gentle with them, but still like, they yeah. are very solid in their shape. They're beautiful. I'm going to take a picture for you. Just for you, completely covered by oil, our lovely yogurt cheese balls. My jar lid, we just do this. Make sure that the seal goes around like this. I just put this on. Now, these are preserved. As long as you keep them in the fridge, because of the oil, they will, they will last for a very long time. But if anybody takes them, they're probably gonna be gone the first party you serve them at. I, I serve them with sliced cucumbers, crackers. Mm -hmm. I just eat them by themselves. Me too. So, as soon as that Greek yogurt is ready, we'll be back soon. You can see that it's holding here to the cloth and that there's a pool in the middle, but there's some along the edge that's holding quite nicely. And there's been quite a bit of whey expelled from the bottom here. I'm actually just gonna start with a quarter cup measure cup because the middle is still quite wet. And that's okay because the bottom isn't. And that's how this cheese making happens. That's how you get really nice thick Greek yogurt. Here's a close up view for you of what I'm looking at. You can see it isn't thick enough yet, but it's almost, it's getting close to Greek yogurt. I'll keep doing this and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm going to remove the cloth from the tray and just put it right on the counter. Spread it right out nicely on the counter then I'm simply going to take my D-shaped scraping spatula and I'm going to scrape the cheesy bits into the center and I can use this actually to capture them. My quarter cup measuring cup will be perfect. There's a little bit of cloth getting in the way and once you're near the end you can just basically wring it out but you want it flat so you can get all of the bit. Oh, look at that, that's lovely. Now, if you don't wanna go back and forth, you don't have to. You can just actually hang it if you want. You just tie it in a ball and hang it over your sink. It strains very well this way too. It just takes a little bit longer. And uh, it's just easier to check this way. It's easier to manage and it goes a little faster because instead of being in a ball, the surface area is a lot bigger where it can drain from. And then it just goes much faster. I've got everything there, and in about two more hours, we should have some beautiful, thick, lush Greek yogurt. And there's nothing like Greek yogurt with some beautiful honey. Well, we're back two hours later, and it's really a lovely, thick Greek yogurt. Look at that. It's perfect. You'll need the D-shaped spatula to scrape it off the cheesecloth. Watch. There's a few strands there, but you can see it plop. That's a beautiful thick Greek yogurt. And then after the Greek yogurt, the Lebna, a few hours later, and then it will start to separate from the cloth when it becomes cheese. You still have to scrape it off when it's Greek yogurt or when it's Lebna. When it starts to separate from the cloth, you know it's becoming cheese. We're going to showcase all of our final products next. So we're back, we're back. It takes a while. Looks like you got a hair done. Yeah, what do you mean? know? You can go get pampered while your yogurt is getting hanging. So it takes a while to go from your yogurt, which is beautiful, beautiful, Look at that gelatinous, wall. even though there's not one bit of setting or gelatin or anything in there and this is the yogurt the regular yogurt after it's sat a couple of days right now it's perfect and then it will be quite runny but if you keep 60 to 80 grams and hold it back for your next batch it will get thicker and thicker like this 
and even thicker every time. After the yogurt, then we have Greek yogurt. Mm. And Greek yogurt is lovely and lush and so good with honey. Oh yes. We had the very good fortune of going to Greece and I was, how do you make that? Well, we hang it. <laughs> and then there's Lebna. Now Lebna, you turn it upside down and it doesn't fall off the spoon. <laughs> it's, you can't roll it into a ball. It doesn't fall off the spoon, but it is so lovely and delicious and so many lovely recipes. Mm -hmm. And then last, and certainly not least, we have my very favorite, which is the yogurt cheese ball. And these have been marinated now, just a little bit. Mm. And we've seen earlier the quality of the cheese when it was hanging. And these are in these gorgeous herbs, which I really love. Time for an up close and personal view at all of these goodies. Okay, let's take a look at everything that we've made a little bit closer up with the yogurt today. So here is some beautiful, thick, lush yogurt just made last night with our own starter. 60 to 80 grams of our own starter. You saw it was very nice and thick. When you start out with a commercial brand, that's even though it's plain, it'll be a little thicker than this at first, but by the second day, it will be quite runny. It's a good place to start though, because it's really nutritious and good for you. If you hang it for anywhere between four to six hours, you'll get this beautiful, lovely Greek yogurt. Oh my. And if you hang it longer, you'll get this incredible Lebna, which doesn't drop off the spoon. Oh, you see that? It just doesn't drop off the spoon. And if you hang it longer, we'll get this incredible yogurt cheese, which we've already rolled and made into a yogurt cheese ball. They're lush and lovely and they can actually be rolled in our hands and they're so tasty. Hello, do you believe me now? Oh my goodness, yum. I, these are my favorite. These, this, this, and th they're all my favorite. Four different wow, that's incredible. products with simply milk and a yogurt starter. It couldn't be simpler. It really couldn't. Or more delicious. Or so, more delicious and healthy. And healthy. And healthy. I mean, we're working on that, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that we've inspired each one of you to try to make yogurt with Thermomix. I hope that you found some useful, valuable tips. And importantly, too, I hope that you continue to take your Thermomix passion forward in your family to create your own family food traditions and try these multicultural tastes all over the world, especially, whoa, a taste of Canada. <laughs> but we're not done. Let's just, let's just have a little chat here because what we're gonna do right now, would you like a yogurt cheese ball, sir? Whoa, would you like a yogurt? Whoa, me too. So here's cheers to you. Happy thermoventioning. Have a lot of fun. See you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs> mm. mm.